So as a word of encouragement and hope, I want to share with you today a little bit about um, the uh, three stories of hope. And the three stories of hope are, the, these three stories of hope are a, a real stories that have happened to me in my life. And the first story was um, something that happened to me very early on after I'd left Bible college. I left um, Bible college and I worked as a civil servant, as a civilian for um, the armed forces, which was a joint elementary flying training squadron. And I did seven years working alongside the army, the Navy and the RAF. Um, and we were teaching young people, uh, young officers and pilots how to fly. And I happened to be one day working in the student crew room. And if anyone's ever served in or worked with the armed forces, the crew rooms can be like, they were like restrooms. They're places where, um, where people can just rest. And there's usually a television and coffee bar in there. And the young students were watching um, weapon system videos from Operation De Desert Storm during the Gulf War. And um, if you know about the Gulf War, it happened in 1990, 1991. And um, they were watching these weapon system videos and they were actual videos of missiles hitting targets. And being young um, students, because they were young officers, flying officers, they were, a lot of them had just come out of the university and quite boisterous. And they were jeering and laughing as the shots were hitting targets. And I think there was a hype of, um, and if you've ever served or worked with the armed forces, there's this harshness, but there's also this, uh, there's this, um, you know, uh, team mentality and it had got a little bit too much and they were jeering and laughing at these shots of people and these um, targets being hit and all of a sudden I, I remember this officer um, walking into the room shouting at the top of his voice what is going on why are you cheering at people dying why are you cheering at people dying and the room went very sober. The video was taken out and put away. And I remember talking to the officer later on um, about what had happened. And he said, I was in Operation Desert Storm. I know one of my shots was on that video and I have never ever forgiven myself for shooting innocent people. Now, he also understood that he had a duty to do and he had a role to do. And one of the things that uh, it was interesting was is, is that through conversations and, and his wife was also a Christian um, and, and myself, he started going to church. And I remember having a conversation with him just before he left. He went, to, he, when his commission ended, he went to... Um, work for Mission Aviation Fellowship and actually is now, well was at the time, it's been many years ago now, went off to fly um, as a pilot delivering aid to uh, people in uh, worn torn situations and in third world countries. So when you, when you see uh, famines and, and hurricanes being hit, he went off to be one of the pilots that flew aid. So that was the first story of hope. And I remember him saying to me that his faith helped him deal with the things of his past. The second story I'd like to tell you about hope is um, a friend of mine, a, a, a very good friend of mine. Um, we used to do a lot of walking together. And um, he was a Falcons War veteran. And I remember me and him walking once in the Vale of Beaver and we were near the castle and we were talking about things as you do just the, you know walking can can clear the mind and he was sharing about his experience 
in the Sir Galahad, watching and helping men who had been blown up um, out of the water. And he admitted that he had suffered with PTSD um, and, and mental issues because of this. And I remember saying to him, shall we pray? And he looked at me and he said, yes, that would be nice. So we stood and we prayed with Beaver Castle in our sights. And we, I just asked for prayer for him. Now, one of the things he did say to me after the prayer was, is he, it, it was thank you. And another thing he said to me was, you know, Steve, I don't have much faith. But when somebody is pointing a gun at you or you're pointing a gun at them, you certainly find that you have some form of faith. My friend later on um, died of a heart attack and I had the privilege of leading his funeral. And I know that um, the last time I saw him before he died, he was saying that he found comfort through prayer. So there's another story of hope, hope in faith, hope in um, God's goodness. And now I'd like to talk about a third story of hope. And it's a story of hope that's quite personal to me. And I'm going to show you um, this medal. It's a medal that was from my uncle. It's the only medal that we, I have of his, um, because when he he was served in um, 1958 to 1962 in Cyprus, in the Cyprus guerrilla warfare. Now my uncle sadly passed away this March due to coronavirus, and he wanted to stand. To, on Remembrance Sunday with this medal. He'd also got some other medals coming, but sadly, because he passed away, we didn't get them all. They're this is a copy. His originals, as I said, he had to, uh, to, to sell, sadly, because he had no money. But one of the things that I, I know is, is that last Christmas, we were talking about medals and things like that, and he was sharing as you do in the late night, um, about his time in Cyprus and how he'd seen active service. And that's why it's got the Cyprus bar on. And that was the last time he saw active service before he, he, he came out of the army. And talking about hope, my uncle hadn't really got a faith. And when I got the phone call, um, bear in mind this was in the middle of lockdown for coronavirus, to say that my uncle had been rushed into hospital. I was in Grantham and he was over the other side in the West Midlands. There was nothing I could do apart from trust in the emergency services. And I remember receiving the phone call from the hospital and the, the, the nurse, the ward sister was saying to me, Mr. Sutton, you understand how serious this is. Your, your uncle has coronavirus. And I said, and what are you doing? She said, to quote my uncle, there are a lot more younger people than me that need to have the bed that I'm in. He refused any critical care. He refused any life support. He said, let the younger ones have it. I've lived my life. I remember going and receiving that phone call, being told that he passed away. And I had hope because of the conversations we'd had that he'd found faith. And I remember going into his house after he'd um, uh, to clear his house. We had no funeral. It was a direct cremation. We had no opportunity to go over and say goodbye to him. And I remember going into his house and 
I don't know if you've ever been into a house where emergency services have been in, but there was lots of catheters and things just strewn on the floor. That's how quick it was. But I found a Bible next to where he was sat. So that gives me hope that he was reading his Bible and having faith. So three stories of hope. Hope that people can find faith. Hope that people who have served and have done things that we could never possibly imagine can find faith. Now, our reading from Thessalonians talks about those who have fallen asleep and it talks about possibly, and that means those who have died. And it means, and it talks about those who still are alive, that's you and me. And one of the things that gives me hope is, is that one day, I will see my two friends that passed away, my uncle and my other friend. And I, I'm sure my other friend, the, the, the pilot, is still alive. But I haven't seen him in a long time. But I'm sure we will meet at the gates of heaven. But the, also there is another thing. It's the responsibility of us who are alive, awake, as Paul puts it. We have to remember when I was young and naive, I didn't really understand Remembrance Sunday. I didn't understand what it meant to stand at a cenotaph and remember those who've passed away. Through the example of friends and getting a little bit older in life, I realised that the cost of these people, these service men and women and civilians, have paid for us. I don't think anyone in the armed services wants war. I think they're ultimately there for peace. They want peace and safety, but they fully understand the rights and duties that they uphold. So my challenge is to you, when you stand in remembrance, this remembrance season, who are you remembering? Now, you may not have anyone in your family who are um, been in the services or had any contact with the services. That's OK. Just remember those who have given and their lives for us, for you and me to have freedom. I will be standing, although I cannot wear this medal. I will be remembering this medal because my uncle wanted to wear this this weekend. I will be standing remembering those friends and colleagues that I've worked with. You might want to stand also and spend a moment of prayer, remembering those who have died this time of coronavirus. Because I'm sure there are many ex-servicemen that have passed away because of it as well. Messages of hope are that God is ultimately in control of all that happens in our lives. God loves us and wants us to have a relationship with us. And my, these two, three stories of hope give me hope that there's still time for anyone to find Jesus in their lives. There's still time for people to come to Christ. All we have to do is be in the right place and the right situation. Amen. Thank you.